Jamie King, faculty with Newmont University, speaking with a projects group. Everybody say hello. Hello, yeah. What class is this? This is application development in .NET. And this group built a what? Uh, we built a game, uh, specifically a roguelike. Uh, roguelikes are games uh, noted for their random level generation and permanent death. So within the time span of our project class, that's what we put together. So the projects class, you don't necessarily have to build a game in this class. You guys just decided to. Let's introduce everybody. Uh, my name's Jonathan Pearl. Drew Hurdle. David Erickson. Bastion Oxer. Jake Weumai. Devin Rucker. We already introduced Mr. Krebs. Okay, take us through your game. Tell us about the game. All right, so when you start up the game, the first thing you see is your class selection screen. Um, this is pretty vital for your playthrough as it determines what abilities you get as well as what weapons you can use. So for this playthrough, I'm just going to start as a mage. As you can see, you are then prompted for uh, save slots. We're just going to, going to use the first one for now, empty, start a new game. So when you start uh, when you start up a new game, you have your game right here, the play grid. You it displays the level. You have your enemies, your items, and whatever what have you all over this uh, level. And you can find your inventory by clicking this icon in the lower right hand corner. So the first thing you want to do when you start up your game is look at your inventory because as you as you start out in this game, you have nothing equipped, nothing at all. So since I'm a mage, you normally equip staves, and I have this spell book here. That will allow me to use my attacks against the normal enemies that we'll find throughout the game. So to my left, you can see a mob. These are archer minions, so that if I get close, you can see I'll just immediately get shot. And as you can see, I took a uh, my health bar received a chunk of damage. It's no good. Take too much damage, you die. Normal game procedure. So we just singled this one out, and we'll just shoot him. And as you can see, we killed him. We got experience. That is reflected in our experience bar. If we get enough experience, we level up, we get more health, and we can equip better stuff. So we, we this enemy dropped a, a sword. However, since we're a mage, we can't actually equip this sword, so it's kind of useless to us. So we'll just drop it again. And we're also getting pegged by another archer. Just take him out. And I took a significant amount of damage there, so we'll just move on to a different place. And we actually have a straggler. Alright, so this archer dropped a potion. Um, as you go through the level, you will, you will soon realize that health is very important. It's nice to have a lot more health. So we'll, we'll just pick up this potion. And as I, pick as I picked it up, this bar on the right side has filled up. This is our jar bar. Basically, you do not store potions in your inventory. Rather, every potion you pick up is collectively stored in this jar bar. Early levels, you pretty much uh, fill up the entire thing whenever you um, pick up a potion. So I'm just going to use it real quick, and as you can see, I regain a small amount of health. As you go through further in the dungeon, and as your character levels up, your jar bar will get bigger, as well as your health bar to uh, steady out the balance. So we're just going to run through this, try not to die instantly. And that seems to be it. I think it's going to be harder to do this time around. What did you guys learn about with group work, working together on this project? You have a large group, actually, so tell me about that. Conflicts were always fun. What do you mean by conflicts? Personal conflicts or? Oh, no, that's the end of conflicts. Source control conflicts. Yeah, source control. So talk about that. Uh, so every now and again, you'll be just minding your own, own business and decide to update your repository when you find out that another group make has uh, committed the CS project file, which is what Visual Studio uses to uh, take care of which files are actually included in your solution. And it's not very source control friendly. It doesn't take too kindly to having uh, angle brackets put in for revisions. And so most of the time we just try to ignore it. And every time someone would commit it and it get forced into the next update, oh, red text, conflict. You can't do anything for a while until you fix it. So what's the process of fixing it? Going over to teammate and beating them, or yeah, talking it out? Heckling. What? Usually some heckling and then reverting, or committing a better one, and just having other people update and revert to that. I'm getting the feeling that this group will work really well together. Is that fair to say? Ultimately, yes. Okay, because some groups do awesome, <laughs> some groups 
Yeah, it gets nasty, but I'm getting the feeling that this project was a success not only as a project, but as a group and a learning experience. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for your time.